Garage, and today I'm going to be carrying on with the diagnostics part of smog. And when I say carrying on, when we were collecting this and driving it back from Sunderland, it kept going into Lipo. And we did think we cured it with the green wire because it actually ran for the longest period of time once we had found that. However, it has continued to do it. So, what I'm going to do today is go down the diagnostic route with it. And I have replaced the boost pressure solenoid on the front and also the EGR solenoid. The reason I've just put these parts straight on is they're easy to access, they're easy to get hold of, and straight away it rules those components out. So now I'm gonna start going down the diagnostic route of checking my back lines, and also peeling back some wiring and see if I can find any faults there as well. So if you also have an OM602 engine in your car, whether it be an E-Class, G-Class, Sprinter, or a Unimog, these things are going to apply to you because the setup in this is exactly the same. So, firstly, I'm going to try and get down to the turbo and check the actuator out. I've just removed the inner arches from the Unimog and this gives great access to the side of the turbo on this. Now, if you're on a Sprinter, a G-Wagon, an E-Class, it might be all access from the engine bay, but you should have actually a lot more room at the side of the turbo to get to this. Now, what I'm gonna be looking at is this blue air line. Now, this runs from the boost pressure solenoid down to the actuator itself. So what I need to do is see if there's any leaks in this area. I'm gonna agitate all the rubber bits because they do look a bit cracked and perished in the hope that there's something obviously causing this drop in boost pressure. And then I'm also gonna use a MITI vac. Now, what a MITI vac does is you can either put pressure down it or you can create vacuum. So I'm going to create vacuum onto the end of this blue line and see if I can get the actuator actually moving because we could be actually suffering with a stuck actuator as well. So let's get testing and see if we can get a result. So a nice positive finding down in the wheel arch here because I was using the MITI back on the front and it was holding vacuum pressure. Brilliant, you'd think that's it for down here. However, when I wiggled the pipe on the end of the actuator, it then dropped the pressure off. Because the pipe was a little bit cracked, it lost enough pressure and everything went back to normal. So what I've done is replaced it with a little piece of blue silicon piping, put it on there and it's then holding pressure however much I wiggle it. So great result. Then I found that the actuator wasn't moving as freely as you'd want it to. It was moving, but very slowly, and it was almost a bit jammed up. So I've covered the actual end of it in WD-40, and all of a sudden, it's freely moving again, and it's going backwards and forwards as soon as pressure increases on it, which is a great, great result. Now, if I do get a similar problem with this again, I will be changing the actuator on the turbo because they do deteriorate. It's got a lot of heat by it in an enclosed environment and they do kind of wear out after a while. But for now, it's moving exactly as you would want it to. So I'm gonna put little cable ties on the ends of each pipe as well, just to stop them slipping apart. Because again, this can create vacuum problems. So little cable ties, put this area back together and let's go for a little ride. <laughs> I've been dreaming on in my head like I've seen it A life worth living is a life with meaning I'll do what I love till my heart stops Okay, so it is test drive in smog to see if that little repair has actually fixed this problem. Now, this issue we've got doesn't come on instantly. It takes a few miles to do and it's when it goes up certain gradients. It's not going to be heat related either because if you cycle the ignition, the problem goes away for the same amount of time, so it's definitely some kind of limp mode. But right now, it's absolutely on it, and it sounds incredible. So, let's get some heat in it, let's get some miles on it, and see whether it's the keeps behaving. Okay, so I'm out on the test run, and it has just fallen into limp mode again. It is not cooking like it was when I first set off. 
it is faster than it was before and everything I've cured, this thing has got quicker. So there's obviously loads more potential of power that comes out of limp mode for it. But going back home, back to the drawing board and see if we can figure out what's causing it again. Right, so that is a first proper test run in smog. And do you know what? It was absolutely cooking. That is by far the fastest this has ever been. So, absolutely great. However, as I said before, it has thrown itself back into limp mode. So, back along the testing things with it. So I'll have a look over the turbo. Everything looks hunky-dory there. So what I'm gonna do is paint some of the panels before they actually go back on the inner arch, just so everything is kind of improving as I'm going along. It's now time for another test drive in smog and what I've been doing is actually checking over all of the vacuum lines. Now I've traced back the ventilation one behind the dash and that is absolutely fine. I've cleaned it out, everything is hunky-dory with that. The other one I've traced back here is a little gray line across the top which goes onto the front of the engine block and that's drawing vacuum directly from the engine. So what I've done is actually taken the EGR solenoid out of the situation so it's going straight to boost. So if for whatever reason like the EGR is taking off too much vacuum or more than it, its fair share then that again could reduce the boost because it's not got enough to actually hold the vacuum open. Again, if there's a split anywhere on that, I'm taking that out of the equation, so I'm just focused on the boost for now. So, quick test drive should eliminate any problems with this. Okay, so I am now on my test run number two, and I'm already further than this thing has ever been without falling into limp mode. And it's driving beautifully. It really is cooking along. So I'm like in a bit of shock at the moment that it could just be that very slight little thing that the EGR is either opening or getting stuck open. Either way, it's running great. It is wonderful. And that carrot at the end of the stick that I've had every time of how good this can be has been dangled in front of me and right now it is cooking. So yeah, I'm gonna keep putting some miles on, fingers crossed, that is it. Now repair then and it is running better than it ever has before and it is cruising along at 50 55 mile an hour out there on the roads and just absolutely amazing it not dropping into the limp mode it's great to finally be able to use this to its full potential and it's just simply been achieved by taking the vac line away from the EGR so it's got all of the vac now going to the turbo solenoid so it's got full control over the actuator for the first time, and it's got plenty of back pressure to be able to hold the actuator out on full boost. So a nice, simple fix in the end, and it hasn't been a big cost as well, which is really cool. So thank you for watching this episode of the Anarchy Garage. See you next time.